ہم آپ کو گاہے بغاہے پاکستان کی تاریخ کے سب سے بڑے ڈی پول سے آگاہ کرتے رہے ہیں ہیس کال سے اور آج ہیس کال کے ہی چیئرمن ہمارے ساتھ موجود ہیں سر آلن ڈنکن آلسو ریپیزنٹنگ دی لارجس انڈیپینڈنٹ آئل ٹریڈنگ گروپ ان دی ورلڈ ویٹ آل سر آلن ڈنکن تینکیو ویری مچ انڈیڈ فور جوائننگ اس تھری میل ریزنز فور دی کراش آف ہیس کال آر کوٹڈ ایز ڈی ویلویشن انکریز ان انٹرسٹ ریٹس فکس پرائس کانٹریکٹس بٹ ٹو بی ویری آنسٹ ویڈ یو انٹرنیشنل آئل پرائسز اور ڈی ویلویشنز آل سیم ٹو بی سمٹمز بورنگ ٹو دی ہیلز اوور لیورجنگ فیک پرچیسنگ آرڈرز ایکسٹرا ایل سیز دی سیم ٹو بی دی مین کوزز واٹ ووڈ یو سی Well, you call it a crash. I mean, the fact is uh, the company is going through uh, difficulties. Um, I became chairman a year ago, and I think if you look at the origins of the problem, they are multifaceted. Uh, I think the company probably did grow too fast, um, but the main issues that have caused the difficulty are on the back of the very high borrowing uh, the company built up are market conditions. We had very difficult foreign exchange exposure, Uh, we did have some fixed price purchases which turned against us. Um, we have had very, very difficult market conditions uh, with COVID and the collapse of prices last year. And indeed, the whole oil marketing uh, company sector has faced difficulties as well. But with Haskell, uh, my mission is to turn the company around. And I'm very happy to discuss with you what we're doing to achieve that. And we'll get to that in a second, Sir Alan Duncan, but um, about turning it around. But over leveraging, over exposure, short term money being invested in long term assets, um, I mean, essentially, that is why the company uh, uh, came to the point it came to. The company was using 90 day cycles when the industry operates on 15 day cycles, essentially. And the LCs are all 90 to 120 days. Um, other OMCs, um, you, you won't see this trend in, in, in PSO or Shell. Um, so, I mean, it, it, all of this has been. quite worrisome to be honest no that, that's absolutely not right and I think you're getting into territory here which is quite uh, complicated uh, for your viewers um, to be expected to understand uh, what is true is we've got a very tight liquidity problem uh, and that is what uh, we're trying to address and the issue here is that a lot of our liquidity has been taken up paying very very high interest rates to the banks. Now, in the past, you, you've used the word default. Well, that's not right. Uh, the reason we face significant losses is that we have been servicing uh, the debt. Uh, all of this happened, of course, before I became chairman. Uh, but what we're trying to do now is to refinance the company so that we have expensive short-term debt converted into affordable long-term debt Uh, plus a bit of equity, and we're in the process of discussing that restructuring at the moment. So the fact remains that, I mean, uh, I wouldn't say anything is too technical for the viewership in Pakistan to begin with, and you're saying it's not a default, significant losses. Uh, whatever you'd like to call it, the fact remains that when you do comparison, Shell's losses are considerably less, and if you do consider devaluation, as you're stating, just the very fact that Haskell had a 90-day exposure on the U.S. dollar when the LC had to be eventually retired, it had to be done on that day's dollar rate. So we say an almost, we, we, in our country, we saw an almost 40% devaluation during Shamsh Shah Dakhtar or um, uh, Asad Umar, the first finance minister's uh, first year. So the dollar went from 105 to 140. Um, it's a huge, huge uh, jump. Naturally, you'd get a hit big time when it was time to retire the LCs. So to be fair, if I say that you were gambling while being over leveraged, would that be wrong? But you say we, I, I, I became chairman a, a year ago, and um, it's not actually that easy to find out exactly what happened in the time before which is why we are very, very vigorously uh, examining the accounts, making sure that they are fully up to standard. And of course, over the last year, the government has introduced some measures to protect oil marketing companies against the foreign exchange exposure they all faced. Uh, so your suggestions that Haskell was the only one to face this, in my view, are not true. But I think it is true to say that compared with some other companies we have faced The, the most severe liquidity pressure. And I would point out that um, you know, if you look at some articles that have been in the press recently, it would appear that PSO is owed over 400 billion. And that, <laughs> that uh, makes um, Haskell look quite small in comparison. So the whole sector is facing a very difficult problem. But what I am trying to do with a new board and new management and with very, very high standards being imposed 
uh, from that board is to turn the company around. And that is the mission that I am on to try and restore Haskell to profitability and to uh, build up for it a sustainable future. But, but sir, sir, sir I, I, I do think that's a wrong um, uh, example to give. PSO, um, uh, it, it didn't default with the banks like Hescall did. And PSO, it did not indulge in value eroding activities like, um, uh, like the management of Haskell did allegedly. Um, and PSO um, is in a position where it has, it's suffering due to receivables. What receivables does Hescall, um, 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 I mean, Hescall doesn't have any receivables. The loss in Hescall essentially is also, is, is going to uh, allegedly the management that was there, Salim Butt, for instance, he was being allowed to do fixed price contracts for three to four months for a better part of the year, assuming that the price of crude oil would go up. But uh, frankly, hedging was never allowed in Pakistan. It is a very risky strategy. Um, and I would like to bring to your attention that your boss, Chris Bake, was categorically told this. Mr. Bake did apologize as well. You were sitting in the meeting, which I'm referring to, sir, um, uh, what if the government of Pakistan were to sue at all for breaking rules and for indulging in hedging? They, I mean, these are, these are admissions which are on record as I speak. I do have information that the same has been quoted to FIA and other investigating agencies here. There are witnesses present. What do you think hedging is? You see, you don't seem to know. And people use these words very loosely. And uh, you are completely wrong uh, in your uh, understanding of what veto was done. I mean, I think you are right from the investigations we've made to say that there was a period where the previous management uh, took a risk uh, on pricing against the market, which turned against them. I think that's right. But I think where you are wrong is in um, your interpretation of VTOL's role. A VTOL is a 40% shareholder, and without their support and the credit they have extended to Haskell, which the banks would not have done, frankly, the company would have collapsed. And VTOL has actually lost something approaching $100 million in their investment, uh, but they have, out of respect for Pakistan, uh, continued to work with the company and are working now to try and turn it around even though they have lost a lot of money uh, because of the way Haskell has failed to perform. But, but sir, I, I am not interrupting you as well because of the, how we are, um, in fact, conducting this interview um, via uh, the technology that we're using. But uh, trust me, we are very well aware of what hedging is. We do sit here very well prepared for this interview, and nothing is too technical for Pakistanis. Uh, I would like to ask you, Sir Alan Duncan, uh, the names of the chief accountants, uh, Ali Ansari and Salim, but often come up. But to be very fair, there's also the statement that you have made, which is on record to the Karachi Stock Exchange, that about seven and a half billion rupees of fake invoices, um, uh, which you have admitted to. But Karachi remains abuzz about another individual. That's Mr. Abdul Aziz, director of it all, and Salim Bhatt, who were considered uh, very, very close. A lot of people in Karachi, for instance, say they're partners in crime, they're good friends. Um, the fixed price contracts and various other deals in the storage companies, the private jets that were used, flown to take Mr. Bhatt, um, allegedly for Umrah. Uh, I mean, I only quote these things because that is what the market is talking about, and, and it is referred to um, that, you know, this close liaison. Um, it, it, it is spoken about because at the end of the day, when the wrong activities were indulged in or wrong decisions were made, it has to be a shared responsibility. Would you like to comment on that? I don't think it's professional journalism just to take scurrilous rumors as fact. Now, the management names you mentioned left at the time I arrived and then a few months later became chairman. So. Uh, what they did is something that uh, I'm not familiar with because I was not part of the company at the time. You are, however, right that the SECP has been uh, conducting an investigation. And my instructions and that of the board is that the company uh, must cooperate fully with the SECP. And indeed, that is what we have done. We have tried to answer all their questions, all of which essentially relate to the past, whereas my efforts, of course, relate to the present and the future. But we're doing everything we can to cooperate with them, and indeed uh, the FIA, uh, although we would argue that uh, the FIA is a, an additional inquiry which is unnecessary when the SNCP are already doing 
uh, something. So uh, I, I think it would be wrong for me to prejudge any of the findings or conclusions of the SECP. But as the current chairman, uh, my view is that we should cooperate absolutely fully with any regulatory authority in Pakistan and to be totally transparent. And it was my transparency which immediately declared to the SECP uh, the fact that we discovered that some of the entries in the accounts were inaccurate. So instead of hiding it, we made an immediate statement uh, to the SECP. And that, I think, is an example of the high standards which are now being set for the company uh, by me as chairman and by the new board. Fair and enough, Mal Alan Duncan. But, uh, but to be fair, you speak of uh, uh, professional journalism. But any relationship which negatively impacts the finances of Hescall needs to be questioned. Uh, so I, I think it is exactly in line of professionalism here that I do point these things out. Out of the two nominees from Batol on the board, you had uh, Mr. Abdul Aziz and Mr. Farid. If Salim Bhatt wanted to go against government policies, allegedly, and do fixed price contracts, he had to take permission from board members. Uh, and if he had to incur any expenditures, he again needed approval from the board. So the board is the ultimate authority. And if you have two representatives there from Batol who are exceptionally close to Mr. Salim Bhatt, do you genuinely expect that questions will not be raised? I have no objection to you asking questions, but uh, I can challenge the assumptions behind the questions. Uh, and I think that although in normal circumstances you're absolutely right, uh, a board should know about these things, uh, I don't think they did. And of course, it's completely absurd just to pick out two names of the board rather than the whole board. So the insinuation that you're putting in your questions is, I think, unfair, unjust and inaccurate. Uh, of what I think probably is accurate is to ask questions about some of the decisions taken by the previous Did all encouraged uh, Mr. Salim Bhatt to engage in conflict of interest situations while he was CEO? I mean, um, that is a question that comes to mind, sir, because they developed joint venture storage companies. Um, they were developed together at the time without telling the board that they were doing this. So it all was on board in storage company. Uh, and in 2019, Mr. Mumtaz Khan as chairman, he did point this out. This I also found to be on the record. And with all admitted it was a mistake on their part. So Mr. Chris Bake, again, your boss, he was conveyed this unequivocally. So they knew they had taken the license to open another company and they didn't stop him. So uh, will Mr. Abdul Aziz be sacked? Will he be taken up for task? Or will he be made answerable for this? Look, I think your accusations are just uh, not concocted, but um, seriously exaggerated. And I think um, unmerited and unjustified. The fact is the Haskell faced very, very difficult market conditions. Uh, and what we are now doing is turning this company around. And I think that the finger of blame that you point uh, is, is, is not accurate. Um, I think that the company was not as well managed as it should have been uh, until uh, a year ago. And my focus is entirely on turning this company around uh, in order to try and make sure that shareholders' interests are properly protected, that the arrangement with the banks is updated in a way that the company uh, can work with. Uh, and I think Let's Talk is updated in a way that the company uh, can work with. Uh, and I think Let's Talk About uh, Our Plans, because that in the end is, is exactly uh, what my and, and I'll get to that in a second, Sir Alan Duncan, but they're questions, not accusations, I dare say. The director on the board, which we're talking about, the one I'm questioning about, he's a trader based in Dubai, doing all the trades on behalf of Mr. Salim Bhatt. He was given a $3 million bonus every year. Do you, do you think that's me pointing fingers? Do you, do you really think that one shouldn't ask questions? Uh, I'm not in a position to know quite what it is that you're getting at here. So uh, I'm, I'm not equipped to answer uh, what seem to be uh, quite unjustified uh, accusations, and it covers a period where I was not involved.